Hey, what's up guys, Frank here. I'm making a furniture grade shop shelf. Is this joinery overkill for a shop shelf? Eh, you tell me. I also ended up with a little gap. Stick around and I'll show you how I fixed it. In this build, I'm gonna be using up some not quite full length pine boards. I've got a check on this end, which I thought I would be able to remove when I shape it, but this one was like an iceberg. It ended up being a lot bigger beneath the surface. I mark and cut out for two sides and four shelves. After everything's cut to length, I thickness all the boards and rip to width on the table saw. I've got an outfeed support roller that's just outside the camera shot. The crack that I thought was just a couple inches ended up running way down this board. I also was using some wood with some pretty gnarly knots, so I decided to just tape everything up, hit it with some epoxy. I drip it in all the deadwood knots down this crack, and I also have this edge that really needed to have another 3 8 inch ripped off, but I'm just going to shore it up with some epoxy. Once it's dried, I'm just going to peel off the tape and clean this up with a hand plane. This edge will definitely need to still be the back and underside of a shelf, but at least it's not going to flake off. First I plane down the epoxy bump, and then I take a light pass all the way across the board. And hey, for a shop shelf, at least I was able to avoid a glue up. I touch up flat on all the boards, removing any machine marks or snipe, and then I check it with winding sticks. After truing up the boards, I bring up the shooting board to square the ends and bring the two sides to the same length and the four shelves to the same length. Quick tip, if it's been a day or so since flattening the boards, taking a couple minutes to do a quick touch up will make the joinery a lot easier. I flush up the two sides and start marking out for the dado. A pencil circle on the knife nick will help me locate that knife nick later. I also mark with a pencil where the other side of the dado is going to be. This is so I know which side of the knife line to cut on. I mark the dado baseline with a marking gauge. Then I secure that piece of wood in a vise and start chopping out the dado. On this first pass, I'm going really light with the chisel into the knife line, and also going to go very light with the first pass of chopping. After forming the first wall, I set the shelf against it and do not knife all the way across the board. Instead, just press one edge against the wall and knife just on that point. Then I use a square to knife the second wall. Once I've chiseled down both walls, align the boards and work down each dado with the router going almost all the way from one direction, then finishing it off from the other direction. As far as I know, this is the best way to get a nice tight dado without having to cut a shoulder on each shelf piece, which would be the standard practice to get a good looking joint line if the dados were not individually sized, such as when using a dado blade or a router. Now we have to get to this point. Typically what I've seen done is ripping off the front edge on a table saw, forming the two components separately, then gluing them back together during assembly. I'm going to transfer this distance to the shelves. This method works great for those without a table saw and honestly even now that I've got one I'd rather do it this way because I think it's just better and it simplifies the glue up as a bonus. First I'm just going to chisel out a little ledge to help guide the start of the saw cut. I'm going with a 10 points per inch panel saw. I think it's the perfect balance of speed and a somewhat clean cut. I take my time slowly cutting down right next to the marking gauge line and flipping the board very frequently. If you enjoy these videos and would like to help support this channel, you can buy detailed project plans for this project and other builds on my website or sign up on my Patreon account. Luckily I remembered to make a stop cut for the dovetail before cutting that shelf all the way through. 
I finish the cut and use a chisel with a bevel against that cut to get right into the corner. This one came out clean, but if I need to, I'll pare down with a chisel. Next, I'll mark out and saw the dovetails. After cutting the dovetail, I fit the shelf into the side and mark out for the dovetail recess. For the dovetail recess baseline, I set the marking gauge just a hair under the thickness of the dovetail. This will make sure the dovetail will protrude and can be plain flush after assembly. The recess is straightforward. Saw down both sides, cut out the waste with a coping saw, clean up the bottom with a router plane. After finishing the joinery, I draw some curves between two measurements. I just like the look of this better than tracing off of a perfect circle. Then I take a bow saw to cut off the curves. A bow saw is just a bigger, faster, more awesome coping saw. And next I'm going to finish plane each board. On the shelves I make sure not to plane the full length of the shelf so that it doesn't mess up the fit inside the dado. I use my number 5 with a sharp blade for a smoothing plane. I do have a number 4 but the handle is too small and it's just not comfortable. But I do have large hands. I'm 6 foot 3 and 6 foot 4 if you ask my mom. Next, I brush glue in all the joints and start assembling. I'm using liquid hide glue for the extra open time. The dovetails are sitting proud right now. I put some glue in the recess, on the walls, and even on the dovetails just for good measure. Once this is confirmed to be square by measuring from corner to corner, I pop it with a couple inch and a half brad nails through the back. The dovetails are proud and need to be plain flush. Good, 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 gap. We'll get to that in a minute. I planed these down, but there's a little hollow section on this one, so I'll have to come back for the last pass on that one. After planing down the length of the side, I take one last pass to finish flushing up the shelves. Now I've flipped the unit and I'm flushing up the shelves on the other side. All flushed up, that gap is a little bit more apparent now and we'll take care of that after I finish flushing up the side.
Okay, for the gap, the fix depends on the finish. For normal oil-based finish, you just saw down the kerf all the way down, cut a spline, and drop it right in there. For bare wood or painted, mix a little sawdust with some glue, make a putty, and cram it in. Give that a couple hours to dry, then I clean it up with my block plane. It still kind of looks apparent right now, but the camera's up pretty close, and it actually looks pretty good and definitely does not catch the eye like it did before. The original plan for this shop shelf was going to be so similar to the sawtill that I didn't think it was going to be worth making a video on, so I redesigned it, came up with this. It's got its own joinery, but it's still going to match the theme I'm going for with my shop wall update. See y'all next time!